good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your WWE Fastlane 2021 full show review. And re what the hell is my throat doing? My God, it's like the Sahara Desert. Woo! <clears throat> Anyways, guys, we're going to take a look at WWE Fastlane 2021, guys, breaking down all of the action that took place at the show, letting you guys know exactly what happened. Again, we've covered it many times on this channel, right? We don't really have a lot going on with this show. We feel like a lot, or at least a lot of fans feel like we could have just skipped right over this show and went straight into WrestleMania, which is, you know, best case scenario. But here we are. We might as well try to enjoy this show to the best of our ability before we get there. Maybe we'll set up some more Mania storylines going into this thing because Mania is just... Just a few weeks away and we got to get into it. But Fast Lane is our last stop there, guys. Let's get into it. Break down WWE Fast Lane 2021. Find out if it was shitty, amazing, or somewhere in between. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So starting things off first, guys, we started out with the U.S. Championship match. Now, I don't know if this was the first match on the card. I'm pretty sure it was. This was on the pre-show. This is the first matchup that I saw. So if there was a match before this, I do apologize. I probably will not be covering it. But this is the first matchup I saw. U.S. title, Matt Riddle versus Mustafa Ali. A matchup that I was really actually looking forward to a lot because both these guys can go. I like both of these characters. I like both of these guys. So this is a matchup that I was very much looking forward to. And it's it slapped. I'd say it slapped. I didn't catch the whole matchup but I did catch the last five minutes or so and it was very intense. You know, I was bought into it. I was excited for the finish to see what would take place. Very physical stuff between the two. The finish of this matchup came, guys, when Matt Riddle took Mustafa Ali up to the top rope and hit a bro Derek off the... Uh, it was a super bro Derek. He hit a bro Derek from the second rope to put away Mustafa Ali after the matchup. Actually, you know, Mustafa Ali, he was he, he broke red because he was pissed off because he lost another matchup and he was sick of retribution so he gets all of retribution in the ring and he pretty much, you know, he says, I'm sick of you. He goes off on him. And they pretty much just storm off. And I'm pretty sure T-Bar and what's-his-face? Mace? Is it Mace and T-Bar? I think both of them beat the hell out of Mustafa Ali. And then they left. And Mustafa Ali was a wreck in the middle of the ring. So I guess, you know, whatever. I, I don't really care about retribution. They were dead on arrival as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> However, Mustafa Ali does come up short here. We'll see where that goes. And Matt Riddle is still your U.S. champion. Solid little football match right here. So our main show opened up with the Women's Tag Team Championships. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. You guys know how I feel about them. Jesus Christ. Versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. You guys know they're on a crash course for the WrestleMania matchup. So we knew in this matchup, right, they were going to butt heads in some way. You could see it from yesterday. I could, I could, like yesterday, I looked into the future and saw this taking place. It didn't take much effort at all, Brad. I just closed my eyes. Night goggles 2020. I saw it coming. So in this matchup, guys, I mean, you know the story. It was like it was nothing too special as far as a matchup is concerned. At the end of the matchup, however, Reginald got up on there. Reginald is what I like to call him. Reginald got up on there. Sounds like a damn pasta or something. Got up there on the apron distracting Bianca Belair. Sasha Banks went after him. She ends up missing later on in the matchup. Sasha Banks lakes, locks in the bank statement on Shayna Baszler. Bianca Belair tries to hit Nia Jax and prevent her from breaking up the submission. Nia Jax would throw Bianca onto that, breaking up the submission. Sasha thinks it was it was Bianca, which never makes any sense to me, because all she has to do is watch the footage and say, oh, Bianca clearly didn't, uh, she clearly didn't mean to do that, but, you know, that's, that's besides the point. Nia Jax would then, of course, you know, throw Bianca onto Sasha. Sasha would get pissed off. She'd, you know, she kind of mushed Bianca's face. Shayna Baszler would roll Sasha Banks up for the win, and they retain their tag championships. Nobody really cares about that, but we get the comeuppets and the blow-up of Sasha and Bianca. They're on their way to Mania. I didn't really care for this matchup. I, I feel like it was a throwaway match. All we needed was just Sasha and Bianca to get their thing going for Mania, and that's what we got. I didn't really think they would win the tag titles. I knew they would bash at some point, and there they go, but Nia and Shane are still your tag champs. This wasn't much of anything but a storyline progression, if you will. Next up, guys, was our Intercontinental Championship Matt Biggie. I don't know why I didn't finish the word match. Match, not Matt. Intercontinental Championship matchup between Apollo challenging Big E for his Intercontinental Championship, a matchup that I was excited for, much like Mustafa Ali and Matt Riddle, man. These mid-card championships with these, these, these guys that I know can go and that really deserve this spot. Getting this spot, you know, to, to actually do battle and show what they got, really appreciate that. However, I don't know what it was, but this matchup just wasn't long enough for me. I felt like it was 
was it started and then it was over in like the blink of an eye. I actually, you know, like this heel character of Apollo, I actually like it, but it, I, I know it's kind of odd with like the accent and everything like out of nowhere. Like I know that's kind of hard to, you know, suspend your belief when you've known a guy that talks a certain way and for him to be making up the accent and you know it's not a natural accent. It's a little bit odd when, you know, they're coming in and they're changing their character completely. However, I actually enjoyed like his work and, and how he kind of projects it, if you will. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just like Apollo for some reason. I, I don't know what's going on. But the end of the matchup came where like there was this odd like roll up schoolboy pin where like it looked like Big E was pinned, but actually Apollo was pinned, but like it didn't even look weird and the referee was kind of half assing the count. It was very odd to me. I I, I, I was kind of confused by it. Like I kind of blinked and I was like, well, well, what the hell happened here? And I don't know. It was a very odd finish for me and it was kind of like a bocce looking finish. I don't know exactly what the terms are here. I guess we'll know going forward, but maybe they didn't give these guys a lot of time because they wanted to build the mania, but this kind of hurts that when, you know, they, these guys aren't going to be locking up for the first time again if they, when they, when they cross paths again when it gets to mania. Hopefully we get like some big intercontinental championship ladder match or something. I think that would be a lot better than, you know, these guys just going one-on-one -on -one again, but you know, I, I would like to see these guys go at it again, maybe, maybe on live television or something on the build to mania. I just want to, I want to see these guys have a little bit more time here, but you know, this is what it was. Big E is still your champion, but I think the story of this again, much like the first matchup, it's more of storyline progression because every match to this point is more about storyline because after the matchup, Apollo beats the hell out of Big E, is slapping the shit out of him, talking shit to him, just beating the hell out of him, and yeah, I mean, he was just saying it's not over, so I'm guessing it's, it's not over, Brad. Next up, guys, we had a concert with Elias and Shane McMahon, and I didn't even know this was going to take place. I guess I missed the little, you know, the little whatever the hell you would call that, the, the backstage segment where this was going to take place. I don't think it was advertised unless it was announced on Twitter last minute or something like that, but I guess Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman was going to happen tonight, but Shane McMahon drops the news on Elias that he will be taking Shane's spot tonight in his matchup with Braun Strowman. So you guys already know, out comes the train among monster men, and uh, yeah. Yeah, here, here comes Braun Strowman, and you guys, have, I mean, you can pretty much, you can telegraph what's going to take place, right? Braun Strowman completely squashes Elias. This is something where I feel like the matchup between Strowman and Shane McMahon is going to really slap at Mania, especially if it's like, you know, No Holds Barred or Street Fight or whatever. It'll probably be really damn good. However, it's just not something I'm invested in, you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a single damn about the outcome of the match. I just want to be entertained throughout the match. So that's my stance here. Didn't really care for it. Braun Strowman squashes Elias and we are getting Shane McMahon and Braun at Mania. I mean, it's just inevitable. Next up, guys, we have my man Seth Rollins taking on Shinsuke Nakamura in a matchup that I was actually very much looking forward to. You know, Shinsuke and Seth Rollins, two great in-ring workers getting into this thing. You know, a kind of a, you know, sort of boiling towards sort of a personal feud here between the two. You know, you got a lot of bodies involved in this thing going back and forth. All of the different things. This was a very fun and physical matchup, man. Like, very good storytelling between the two. Very good offense between the two. These guys have great in-ring chemistry, much better than AJ Styles and Shinsuke, if you, if you can believe that. You probably can after the matches we got between the two, but you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Seth Rollins and Shinsuke put on a great matchup right here. Very creative and fun, just back and forth between the two guys. Very much what I expected out of these two, so I was very happy that it lived up to the hype. Seth Rollins does win with an ugly-looking curb stomp. It's a little bit off the hilter there. It kind of looked a little bit off. However, Seth Rollins gets the win, and we'll see where, you know, we go from here, but I cannot wait to see what comes of Seth Rollins' feud going into Mania, exactly who he's going to take on. Is it going to be Cesaro? Is it going to be Shinsuke in some capacity? Is it going to be thrown into an intercontinental situation? We don't really know at this juncture. It's probably going to be Seth versus Cesaro, but we're going to find out on the road to WrestleMania, but this is a very fun matchup. It doesn't mean a whole ton, but it was still a very fun matchup, a very good matchup, and I recommend you going back and checking it out if you didn't miss it, but the Messiah gets the win over Shinsuke Nakamura. Next up, guys, what's our matchup between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. No holds barred for the former best friends going at it right here, man. This one was very intense and physical as I knew it would be. You know, when you have Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, these are two of the most physical wrestlers in the entire world, I would say. Like, they're very physical. They don't give a shit about their body, man. They're going to go in there, beat the hell out of themselves, beat the hell out of each other. And since they're so close, no, you know, all bets are off, man. They probably talk to each other and were like, you don't hold nothing back, bro. I'm about to beat the hell out of you. You beat the hell out of me. 
These men beat the hell out of each other. Very fun matchup. They battled all over the arena. It was super duper hard hitting, like super duper hard hitting, man. Like it was intense, very enjoyable. We had weapons throughout. We had some great spots. I mean, Sheamus right here got thrown through an LED board. You had the spark OMG moment going all over the place. White noise off the barricade through the announce table. Multiple weapons. I mean, this thing was intense, man. It was just one of those brutal matches where it's just like, damn, you can tell that these guys are going to be sore tomorrow for sure. Like, back cuts, all kinds of stuff going on. Drew McIntyre is on his way to WrestleMania, and he puts away Sheamus here tonight in a very enjoyable matchup. I think this is the right choice. You want to have Drew McIntyre have his momentum going into WrestleMania versus Bobby Lashley. So, I didn't think that he would lose here, but very intense matchup, very enjoyable. I think you should go back and check it out if you missed it. Drew McIntyre is headed to WrestleMania after defeating Sheamus in what I think was, it was pretty damn good, man. I think you should go back and watch it. So we will see what's next for Drew, man. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, he also had on this sick-ass Braveheart-inspired face paint, like the black and white, not black and white, he had the, the blue and white over his face. He looked awesome. And I couldn't help but think to myself, Mattel was probably like, hey bro, can you change up your attire a little bit? That way we can keep pumping out your figures for the top picks wave in the elites. That way we can have at least a little bit of a difference. So I'm guessing his next figure is going to come with an interchangeable Braveheart face paint face. I, I guarantee it. But yeah, Sheamus is defeated by Drew McIntyre. Next up, guys, we have the intergender match. Randy Orton versus Alexa Bliss. Now, we knew this wouldn't be your basic wrestling matchup, right? We knew the Fiend would show up in some capacity. We knew there would be some crazy-ish going on in this matchup, Brad. And that is exactly what we got in this thing, man. I mean, Alexa Bliss apparently has superpowers. She had ring fire coming up. She had scaffolding falling with light fixtures. She had fireballs in Randy Orton's face. And out of nowhere, Brad, the, the real story of this matchup is the ring getting cut open. The ring gets cut open. You see a hand come up. It looked like part seven Jason Voorhees coming up. Coming out, grabs Randy Orton's foot. Out comes the Fiend, and he looks completely different, man. He's got, he looks like part seven Jason, man. He has like a burnt face, and he's got like, his arms are all burnt up. He looks like a zombie. I mean, it's pretty freaking cool, man. It looks pretty damn awesome. I think it looks awesome. I am definitely going to be getting a custom of this. Yes, I actually sent BEW a head sculpt in advance for this reason. Like, I knew that he was going to be getting a new look. So, I went ahead and got that on the way. Hopefully, that will look amazing when it is all said and done. But this fiend looks crazy, man. He looked crazy. I like the way it looked. I mean, I knew this would happen. We all knew we were going to get Randy Orton versus the fiend at Mania. Probably going to be a buried alive match if I had to guess. That's what I would guess, at least, for Mania between these two. But really cool, man. He, man, he literally looks like Part 7 Jason. That's all I can say. What do you guys think of the new fiend? look. I think he looks super badass, but I just feel like a character like this is super badass. He's just kind of hard to book because you can't really book him like Jason Voorhees because it's wrestling and it's like, you know, there's a bunch of gray area and then you get yourself in a hell in a cell situation with Seth Rollins where you can't even kill the guy, but Jesus Christ, man. I don't know what the hell, but Alexa Bliss of course wins. I don't know how the match didn't end in a DQ when you're throwing fireballs and you're dropping scaffolding and the Fiend hits the sister Abigail on Randy Orton, so I don't know how that wasn't DQ. Maybe there's no DQ of announced last second. I don't know, but Alexa Bliss won the match. The Fiend has returned. He looks like a damn zombie. That's all you need to know. Definitely look him up, man, because he looks freaking he looks atrocious as far as, like, he looks hellish, man. He looks crazy. And for a minute, guys, we had the Universal Championship match. Roman Reigns defends against Daniel Bryan with Edge as special guest enforcer. Now, coming into this matchup, I figured it would be a good football game. I also figured that Edge, like we pretty much predicted, I'm pretty sure I fantasy booked it the other day in the fantasy booking video. It went pretty much to plan. Ref bump. Edge has to, you know, step in and be the referee. He ends up getting in the crossfire between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. He ends up helping out, or actually, he didn't help out nobody, bro. He hit Daniel Daniel Bryan with a chair, he hit Roman Reigns with a chair, he didn't give a goofy god dang man, and he walked out of the arena, and it eventually led to Roman Reigns retaining the championship, a triple threat is all but confirmed at this point, I'm okay with that, um, we all pretty much knew it was coming, I think it'll absolutely slap titties man, it's gonna be a great matchup, I think, you know, Daniel Bryan being involved in triple threats, and you guys know the whole deal, like this, this guy knows how to get it done, triple threats at Wrestlemania just always mean more man, they always deliver, they always hit home, and I think this one will be no different whatsoever. I cannot wait for this one, man. It's going to be a super fun one, and I'm excited to see everybody's gear for the show. I'm excited for everything that took place. You know, this show overall, I mean, did we need this show? Absolutely not. I think we still got some epic moments. I think Seth Rollins and Shinsuke delivered. I thought Sheamus and Drew McIntyre delivered, but 
I think the big story on that, I think this match, overall this match was very good and very fun as well, which we, we knew it would be, right? I mean, it was hard hitting, it was physical, great storytelling here. I love the shenanigans involved. Jey Uso got involved. I mean, overall, man, just a really fun matchup. Edge got involved at the end of the day. Roman Reigns does retain. It pretty much sets itself up perfectly, even though I don't think we needed it. It was still a nice homage there. Lots of things on this show was more like storyline driven, not a lot of, you know, meaningful things, more of just, I feel like you could, you didn't need a pay-per-view to get all these things across, I don't think. Maybe this matchup, you could have done this matchup, maybe, you know, two or three weeks before WrestleMania, but I still think it was an okay show. Nothing too ridiculous, like I said, but a few good matches, and I think we are on our way to WrestleMania, man, but that pretty much does it for our Fast Lane review. Overall thoughts on the show was solid. You know, the Fiend's back. I thought he looked pretty damn badass. I'll get a custom of that as soon as I possibly can. I think it's going to be pretty damn epic. You guys can let me know what you thought of Fast Lane, the Fiend and everything in between down below. Are you excited for the triple threat or would you wish it was just one-on-one? -on -one? I hear a lot of people saying just one-on-one, -on -one, but you know, I, I don't think it really matters. It's going to definitely deliver. I think the storyline calls for it, so we're just going to see what the hell takes place, man. But that pretty much does it for your Fastlane 2021 review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the show down below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, my damn toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. And I guess just, I, I, don't, I don't know, just don't, don't do the thing, you know? Don't. Don't, don't cross the line. You cross